Royalty, witchcraft and poltergeists await the most haunted crew at Alpen Manor. Welcome to Most Haunted. This week I've brought you to a sheltered valley in Gloucestershire where it's said a monk walled up and left to die still roams this ancient building on a regular basis. With apparitions in abundance including Queen Margaret of Anjou and a mysterious grey lady, we just had to come and investigate Alpen Manor. The Alpen estate has a recorded history of a thousand years. The land and house was owned by the Alpens from 1100 to 1462. Eventually, it was handed over to the Daunt family through marriage and remained with them until Thomas Daunt VII died in 1803, childless. The house then remained half dilapidated and overrun with ivy. The manor was saved in 1867 and again it went through many changes. Its history connects it with a number of old families, talented artists, writers and famous visitors, including royalty. Something else that has given the manor notoriety is this ghostly picture taken last year by the owners. There's been at least 1,200 years of occupation here on this site at Alpen Manor. Originally, the Saxons came here in the 9th century, a fella called Olla, and it was called Olla's Pen. The Normans came here, and now, with so many people living and dying on this site for over 1,200 years, the amount of energy, the amount of emotion, Pain, terror, I'm pretty sure that a place like this has got to have more than its fair share of ghosts. Three spectral images have been seen in this room. A grey lady, a tall, elegantly dressed woman, and Queen Margaret of Anjou. There are various um, recorded sightings. Probably the most famous of all, Queen Margaret of Anjou wife of Henry VI. She was one of those women, one of those famous women in British history. She stayed here the night before the Battle of Tewkesbury. This was probably the last night of happiness this woman had. The following day, she lost the Battle of Tewkesbury and her son, the Prince of Wales, Edward, was slaughtered on the battlefield. And they believe that she returns here to haunt this place, the place where she was happy probably for the last time. My father definitely saw her and he didn't believe in ghosts and, and he was very reticent about talking about it and I had, I mean, it took me a couple of months for me to actually get it out of him that he had actually seen her. And then he described her to me very accurately. The figure of a large hooded man has been seen throughout the building, but no more so than in this room. It's said it's the tortured soul of a monk who was walled up and starved to death during the Reformation. In 1100, when this place was first built, there is a report of a man that became a Benedictine monk just before he died here in this building. So there is a possibility that that man dressed as a Benedictine could still haunt the place to this day. I was lying in bed and actually thought there was someone behind me, so I turned around to have a look and saw a kind of a man in a red jacket thing, like a suit jacket, walking across the room towards the cupboard, which used to lead to a staircase, which went down to a cellar. Um, I didn't know who he was, but apparently it was a monk. It's not like seeing an actual person. It's um, as if it's through frosted glass or in a mist or something. The attic is supposed to be haunted by the seventh Thomas Daunt, a wizard and alchemist. Since his death, it's said he haunts this very spot. And a mischievous child has been seen, as well as heard, running up and down these stairs. I'm interested in tonight. With quite a few stories, I'm hoping that something may happen. We'll have to wait and see. I definitely believe that Alpine Manor is haunted. There's definitely something here. I think the way to cope 
with being on your own in the house is to talk to them. So do you think anything's going to happen tonight? Um, at this moment in time, you're asking me that question, um, I'd say not an awful lot is going to happen tonight, but this being most haunted, we have had unexpected things happening in places that we wouldn't have expected to happen. For instance, East Kirkby. Where do you think are the most sort of active places? Well, I think the, the best places to start the vigils on are the back stairwell, where the little girl's been seen, the Queen's Chambers, where Margaret of Anjou has been seen quite regularly, apparently, and the attic rooms upstairs. Now, what do you think about the photograph that was taken? It looks a little bit funny to me. It looks the a bit photograph, suspicious. yeah. Mm. I have to say, I think it's an unintended fake where somebody obviously was in the house and they didn't realise it. Surrounded by woodland and totally secluded, we all felt a little apprehensive. When night fell, everything looked so black. We'd spent the day in and around the manor and had felt uneasy. How would we feel during the night? Only time would tell. We needed the help of psychic medium Derek Akora to hopefully communicate with the supposed spirits that haunted this old house. With the crew complete, we were ready to begin our investigation at Alpham Manor. Now, just walking in here into this room, um, I, I, I pick up uh, very strongly. Maybe she wants me to pick this up, bless her. She's certainly not against us, which is a plus, thank you. Um, a very gracious um, soul, a lady uh, who... Um, she gives me the impression that not only is she active here, she walks around this home and I feel there's a, a tinge with her, um, I feel, of sadness, and that sadness I feel was born out... Will you help me with this, Sam, please? Born out of... Um, uh, I feel the only way I can wear the tragedy, a feeling of tragedy that was bestowed upon her, I feel as if a heart, even though she's in the spirit body, a heart going out to a young male. Mm. And this young male means so much to her. And, you know, what is that again, Sam? It's like as if to say, how dare they? How dare they? And it's like... Just for a moment, I got a, a mental picture of this young boy being held and grabbed and, and taken away, and she's like this, oh. you know, screaming mm. for him and taken away. And she found out that he was... Um, the only way I can put it, he was murdered. He was... His life was taken from him. Is, is Sam able to give us the name of the, the gracious lady you're talking about, or...? I hope so. Um, I, don't know, I keep on okay. keeping it open just to see if I can get it. She is a very gracious lady. Mm -hmm. This lady, can I tell you, mm. she likes nothing better than to um, dress um, and really look her best. Mm. And she... I'm not going to say um, coloration of her dress because she has that many of them. Oh. She dresses in different colours. Would you say she was a... A uh, rich lady of, of, of means? I feel or? She, yes. I, I, I get this, like, I don't know, like a regal feeling right. to her. Okay. As if she she was a good soul, right. not a bad soul. Did she live here? Yes. She lived here? I feel she did, yes. Mm -hmm. Yet, the son, the loss of her son, it's like he didn't lose his life here. He didn't lose his life in this home. Mm. There's a male, a male who has lived here. I can't quite get his name. He moves about here. Sam, I know, will help me with this. Mm. A male, a man, um, and I want to go... OK. That looks like 17... Between 17... I don't know what has to give this to me, just mentally. I feel as if I'm going 1751, 1751, 1770. Is that the time that this man was here? Yes, and then and they give me another figure of time, 1730 something. Mm -hmm. So there's like three figures of time. So who was he then? Um, he was one of a bad lot. Oh, right. And he's still a bad one. In what way is he a bad lot? Well, oh, if, if he was here physically, yeah. he'd want to do so many terrible things to you. Right. More so the ladies than the men. Right. But he'd still do the same mm. to the men. Right. But he'd smile in front of you. Uh -huh. And he would inv invite you. 
and give you a totally different picture of his person. So was he sort of like the, 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 sort of the, the, the main man here? Did he own the property? Yes, I feel. Times? Yes, I feel he was here in that position. I feel a short space of time that he was here, but whilst he was here, he was a degenerate. He was a nothing short of evil. Alpen Manor was a place that was steeped in history, and Derek had already picked up on a man's presence that was considered evil. Myself and the crew hoped we were not going to come across him. As Derek led us all upstairs, I started to feel intense pain in my back. How's your back? I'm absolutely in agony with my back. Well, I, you see, by me talking about that <sighs> level of evil down there, this is what we call drainage. You're right. And, you know, they're zapping your energies, and it goes to the spine. So let's hope we can, you know, cover you up from that. Do you want a break, or are you okay? No, I'm all right, yeah. I'm fine. It's just so painful. Yeah, I don't I know got... why, I've, I've been fine all day. I know what that feels like. It, it's happened to me in the past, and it's not nice. OK. Go on, then. Where okay. do you want to go? Can we go into this bedroom? Yeah. Where is you? Right. Now, this to me is... I don't use this word very often in this work, but this seems to me at this moment to be quite delightful. Mm -hmm. A feeling of um, peace and serenity, and yet this like feeling of, oh, oh there we go, her energies, that's better, Sam. That's better, bring her a bit closer. Okay, now I was talking about this lady earlier. Yeah. Who walks around this home a lot, and um, you know, dresses. Uh, what I want to say, if I may, because Sam's confirming it. Did you hear that? Sorry. Yes, yes. that bang. Did you hear that? Yeah. I heard that I was talking. Hello? 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 Do you want to check for us? Hmm? Sure. Yeah, that was very clear, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was a distinct bang. Should yeah. we go back in? Yes. Uh, what I want to say, if I may, because Sam's confirming it. What I want to say, if I may, because Sam's confirming it. I am aware of, again, what I was saying a moment ago about the, the lady's presence who comes in here. And she's not alone um, at times. Uh, accompanying her is a young male. I do feel that it would be a son to her. Right, which is what you said, you said earlier. Did I say that, yeah. the son? And I feel um, she only holds on to one little negative thing, mm. and that is when she's in the atmosphere, um, she's absolutely thrilled to be again with her son, but then the spirit body... Margaret! Um, I've just got a female's voice said, Margaret? Oh, right. Margaret. Right. Um, is, are you Margaret with the son? Yeah, OK. And um, you're not unhappy that we're here? No, she's not. They took him away and killed him. They took his son away and killed him. Margaret, say it again. How do I pronounce that? Margaret, it sounds like Margaret and Anjou. Mm -hmm. Anjou. Yeah. Margaret Anjou. They what? They incarcerated Margaret. They um, put her away and took her son away and killed him. And um, uh, essence of thought, um, coming to this home, um, she pays uh, regular visit visitations. So who, who's Margaret Anjou? Margaret Anjou? Who would she be, Sam? Say it again. Now, I don't know what this means, but it's his words to me. It's, it's, he was talking about something queen or queens, and then he, he used the word, it sounded like consort, comfort or consort, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. What's the name of her son? Can she tell you that? I'll ask Sam over this. Mm. Um, this was a young boy. Mm -hmm. She naturally brings the boy. In other words, she never ever wants to see him out of her sight. Yeah. You say young boy. How? What kind of age would that sort of be? Oh, gosh. Can, Sam can tell you. That. Because I'm not actually seeing him, I'm only going to give you what I can right. okay. um, feel. But I feel he, he wouldn't be any older than. Gosh, he wouldn't be any. I don't feel he would have reached the age of eight. Right. I feel he probably uh, maybe a little bit younger. Mm -hmm. um, he's um, a 
a lively child, and I feel he contributes. He's one of... The, there are many children here, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. How many? Look, quite a lot. There's a little blonde girl. Yeah. A little beauty. Yeah. Um, and she's, um, again, not evil or bad. She's very mischievous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the lovely lady's son joins in with her, OK? And goes about up these stairs, up mm -hmm. this... Whoa, and up. Mm -hmm. And they cause all kinds of... Um, noises and and uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised whether in their efforts um, that anyone that was physically in the room would see probably um, you know spirit lights and um, most certainly noises and laughter and you know little screechings and things like that right. which they throw out right. and there's no harm in that mm. that's not evil no that has been heard hasn't it has it? been heard yeah, yeah. Has that? yeah. yeah. okay. Do you want to go back outside? Because there's a corridor that runs along here. Mm. Um, that sort of I don't I don't personally like that corridor. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what you come up with there. Okay. Should we do that? Yes. Okay. Do you know the corridor I mean, Phil? This one. Yeah. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Well, this passageway here, again coming into these energies, mm. what's been actually thrust out at me at the moment is um, feelings of... When I talked about, you know, the children, mm -hmm. the children often come up this way, but there's, as I stop here for some reason, there's an individual that, when coming up here, um, hovers about, so to speak, around this area. And it's got something to do with the evil practices and things. So he's an easy evil then? Yeah. This, this is the evil person you're talking about down, down on the bottom yes. floor? Yes, yes. Again, this evil transports itself throughout this building, moves. You know, the spirit people don't just stay in one spot, as, as we mm. know. But um, I want to say that he and a number, maybe his family, OK, mm. in a group, mm. would... Um, this is what I get, you know. It's like a person purporting to be a very nice sort of person mm. and then, you know, cajoling people. Because um, what comes to mind is, like, if there's a village near here or people who travel and would stop here, these people would be, you know, encouraged to come in and to be met by a very jovial personality, attitude, and behind that, all that joviality and, and kindness is just sheer evil of intent. Who is this man then? What's his name? Daniel, Daniel, Daniel something, Daniel, Daniel. I know his essence is listening to me, um, and I firmly believe maybe what you were receiving before, what you, around your spinal column, mm. is his energy mm. of negativity trying to drain. Should we move further down? Yes. OK. He moves up and down this corridor, but not just himself. There are other people linked with him, and um, I don't know if they were cohorts or family to him. Until now, all the spirits that Derek had sent seemed to be benevolent. All this seemed to have changed with the discovery of a mysterious and evil man named Daniel. Perhaps more would be revealed on the upper floors of the manor. It's like as if I've got three movements at times. Energies coming in, moving about. Um... Oh, OK. Is that a name, Sam? Is that a name? How do I pronounce it? OK, Sam's just... It's not the spirit giving it to me, but Sam has said here to mention the name and I'm just copying what he said, the way he's pronouncing it. Um, OK, it sounds like Loughton. Loughton? Loughton? And Loughton, he said Loughton walks here. Loughton comes in and walks here. And then I get the conditions, it's not just one Loughton, I feel there's a number of them, so there's got to be a family, I feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if they walk um, this premise and what have you, it means that they must have had presence of living here. Um, again, energies coming here of children. Right. They move about. Um, the lovely lady 
who I talked earlier about, she also has at times of coming here. Mm -hmm. um, this is not uh, just residual energy. Mm. There is activity here. Right. And that activity can show itself in many ways. Right. Um, albeit, you know, noises. Again, I feel because of three mixtures, there would be a manifestation at times mm. of a spirit shape. Is it coming to your back again? <sighs> yeah. It's probably this negative <sighs> soul that's, oh gosh. I just get the feeling that it, it's going to open it's going to open up here and maybe you've got more than one to contend with. Are you able to sort of tell us when perhaps the last um, activity happened here? God. How strong is the sort of energies remaining from the last activity? Something could have happened up to as, as little back as, OK, I don't know, 1970s, mm -hmm. 1980s. Um, I feel stuff has, has happened f even from then. Right. Can I suggest that we, we, we actually go to night vision now? Yeah. Would I, that I be mean, a good idea? I think so, yes. Yeah? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. I just, it just comes and goes and I've had no problem yeah. at all. But when we get into a, a certain area in this building, I feel that's where <sighs> there'll be, there could be even stronger. If this individual and cohorts wish to do it, um, we should get a warning quite quickly. As usual, the crew had split up into small groups so we could cover the building more effectively. Many hours were spent waiting patiently for something, anything to happen. All was quiet on the monitors and our patience was wearing thin. We all wanted something to happen. To hopefully induce a paranormal occurrence, we called in another psychic, Ian Lawman. It would also be interesting to see if Ian could pick up on the same spirits as Derek. We asked him to go into the attic room with Carl, Stuart, myself, and on this occasion, we had a four-legged addition to the crew in the shape of the owner's dog. Is there actually another room through there? Yes. It's an attic. And there's no room in it? Yeah. No, it, well, it's, it's, it's an attic space. <gasps> that's somebody else has got to be. But that's up here? Yeah. <clears throat> well, no one else should be up here. There's no one else up here. That was like a, a cry. Yeah, it was a cry. God, I hope we got that on, because if we both heard it... I heard that as well before. I did. I, did I thought it that. was a cat. I thought it was a cat. Dog, was dog's not happy. Spirit within this room. Please give us a sign. I'm asking you to give us a sign, give us a noise, to let us know you're in this room with us. You're not going to move out of this space until you make a noise. So you, Stuart? No. I'm asking for you to give us a sign. Is that you, Stuart? No, I'm not moving. Sorry. Something's moving over there. He's getting angry. Can you feel the adrenaline? I've got such a headache. I've got to say, I've got a fidget headache. Yeah, he's getting, he's getting angry. move away from that. What is that? It's coming from behind me, whatever yeah, it, it is. is. Wow. Come on, that's rubbish. Give us something better than that. Are you going to do something? We need to know that you are here. Where are you? Behind Stuart.
Why do you feel cold? Oh, oh heck. I heard that. What's the matter? It's the dog. Yeah, he wasn't happy though, he squealed. We were convinced that we could hear tapping and creaking noises coming from the area of the door between the attic rooms. It was almost as if an invisible presence was standing there. Despite our growing fear, we moved forward to investigate. Oh, shit. What? Oh, you are joking me. What's the matter? Something just hit me. Well, something flew. Something I hit heard me. it. Something hit me right on the back. I heard it. Go on back it, in. It's basically like, now you're out. Get out. It seemed that Carl had been hit hard on the back of the neck by a book. With such apparent poltergeist activity taking place, we could only helplessly stand by as the strange noises continued. There. How do you feel like that? I feel very, uh, I feel nervous. Because there's something definite. It's just watching us, that's what it is. Whoa. Where's the dog? Yeah. Oh my god. There is death. Yeah. It's gone close. It's like something's gonna it's like something's gonna come and get you. Yeah. It whistled then. You know you want to talk to us, come on. I can see you just stood there, come closer. After over half an hour of waiting, our nerves were in tatters. The unexplained sound seemed to be getting closer and an oppressive atmosphere filled the room. Back in here, Ian. Mm. Oh, God, did you hear that? He's not happy again. Did you hear that? Yeah. Whoa. That is exactly the sound you'd expect to hear if somebody was standing there. Is that you? Carl? What? Is that you? Did Go you on. move your foot and make the floorboard creak? No, I didn't move at all. Did you hear that? I heard it. There's some lights down there. Yeah. It's not a... It's OK. It's OK. Come closer. Closer, come on. It's here. It's in the room now. It's here. He's just stood in the doorway. He's not happy. Where is he? Sweetie, what's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? He's laughing at him. Where is it? What if we just open that door? The dog will run through it, it's the attic. He's gone. He's telling us to go. 
Yeah, he is, isn't he? He's got... Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! Look oh. at that fantastic light anomaly! Wow! It was yeah. a Cullane Castle. It went really slowly Why past the door. To about? The door! Can that door with the dog go in there? Yeah, we might lose it. Um, that no. wasn't me. That was a knock. But that wasn't the dog. That wasn't me. There's that something behind me. There is something behind me oh. by that door. Dog, dog, dog's not happy either. Dog, dog's looking directly there. Oh my something god. Something knocked on that door then. It did, yeah, it, it did. Behind me. Now, I can't physically reach that um, four foot away from that door, so it wasn't me. Is it still, still the same guy in? Is he here? Yeah, very emotional. There's a lot of, there's a lot of aggression in him. All was quiet around the rest of the manor. One room, though, remained a mystery. This room had no reported ghost sightings or paranormal activity. The attic room seemed alive with energy. Earlier, Carl, myself, Stuart and Psychic Ian Lawman had witnessed creaks, tappings and bangs. As we left the room, a book had hit Carl on the back of his head. Oh, shit! We cannot explain any of this strange phenomena. By calling Derek up to the room, we hoped he would clear a few things up for us. Little did we know, it would create havoc. Right, this negative soul hates um, this man called Daunt. It sounds like Daunt. Mm -hmm. And he ha they hate each other, or they dislike each other badly. Um, so there's a, a person, a spirit person, who comes here called Daunt. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I, at this moment in time, I don't know if they're from the same era, but I know the two of them see each other. And that's in this upper level, when they see each other, when they're developed in these atmospheres here, there's clashes. And the clashes don't, you see, don't hasn't got the power that this other evil one's got, but he, he challenges him. When you say there's clashes, are the, are the people, the visitors here, are they aware of the things that go on? Oh, they could hear screaming, they could hear screeching, they could... In actual fact, would you believe it? I bet you someone has heard what water. What was that? that no was way. Here, I yes. Heard, I heard that. Just through there. I heard that without a doubt. No, these I heard here. a book. A book came. I heard that. I heard that. See these? Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yes. <gasps> what's it come out with it? And this what's there, but what's the picture? What's yeah, but look at the picture that's come out. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Christ. You can't really pick that up on. That's. Is that, that hasn't fallen out. Yes, it has the book. What's the book? Can we get a light on it? Yeah, get a light on it. What's the book? I don't uh, know. The ten principal Upanishads. Uh, uh, Never mind. Oh. But look oh. at the drawings in it. That's mm. horrible. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Shit. What's the book though? Yeah, but look at the drawings. Oh, that's. No, oh, that's no, horrible. That's pretty yeah. macabre, isn't it? I can't be sure whether that wasn't here when we came in though, because. No, but the really no, no, I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm, I'm, I'm basically. I'm right next to this bookshelf here, yeah, and I saw out the corner of my eye something moving. I did out, man. And I, I, I honestly saw something moving, I heard. And, yes. it, and, it, and I heard like a book falling off a bookshelf. That's yes. what I heard. But was that was that from that bookshelf? Yeah. Well, it was from to my left, and I saw something in the corner of my eye falling off, and and it obviously, well, there's a book lying on the bed. These are the drawings that were found in the book. The images are dark and disturbing. When we asked the family if they knew who had drawn them, they were just as mystified as us. Michael, the owner, then came to tell me that another book had been found in the attic room a few months earlier, with some of its pages torn out. To this day, Michael doesn't know who did it. I've just heard, I don't know if anybody else heard it, but a bang through there. I heard no. creaking. I heard some creaking, like someone was standing behind that door. Come on. Come on. Come on. Noise yeah. over there again. Why am I going first? I it's all right, love. It's OK. No way! Oh, you're joking! Right on my leg. Right on my leg. Right on my leg. Oh, 
Okay. That, that, that just hit me. It just hit me. Oh, oh, What's going on? I don't know. But this he blocked, is... Well, a book, flying a book, a book just fly, hit my leg, hit my thigh, and it's... Not and, and that hit me really hard shit. as well. This, this, shit. This is, this is the forest primeval. What? This is a oh, murmuring pines and the hemlocks. Bearded with moss. So it's poems, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's but just that, random. That, if there is a spirit from? in here, if there is one, it's but playing that, and it's bringing that, stuff that out. Hard, it doesn't matter. I don't think the books mm -hmm. meaning anything. I think mm -hmm. they're just bringing stuff out. Yeah. This is pro this is poltergeist activity. <coughs> yeah, right. it is. It, yeah, this is weird. I tell you what, I must admit, I am worried because if that that hit me hit me very hard, and if if that hit me in the face, if that hit someone in the face at that oh, at that speed, so that's going to really hurt. What are we looking at then? Are we looking at poltergeist activity? <laughs> Jeez, he's behind I've us. It. I've got it. You got him? <laughs> I've not got him, I've just got the thing moving. He just come be he come behind me and he knocked. Shit. He, he come right at my side here. And he, he put, I come away and he leant back on that and then Can come just, back again. Just let me check this for He come from this direction. Right. And I'm standing here and I felt this brush against me and I pulled back and the next minute he pushed back against that. And I felt as if he was in physical presence. Mm -hmm. Like as if it was so tangible, he, he's in his spirit body, but he's got the power to press past you in his physical presence. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. It's okay. Can I, can I, can I suggest something? Ooh. Hear that drum? Everyone be quiet now. He's hitting it. There's anybody in here, please, can you do something again? Please, can you give us another sign to show us that you're in here? Please, if you can hear my voice, please do something, anything at all, so we know you're still around. Please try and move something, anything at all. We know you're here. Okay, there again. And again. And again. Keep going, please. If you want us to leave, please do something more. Please do something, anything at all. Some more, please. We need to know that you are listening to my voice. If you can hear me, do something now. Another book. More books. More books have just come off the shelf. Was that, was that, was that drum there? there? Oh, the drum, the drum. No, yeah. It was. Sketches from a different part. That freaked me, though. So that's, that looks like it's come off there. This look, well. Yeah. And that drum's knocking again. With so much happening in the attic room, we decided to conduct a seance with both mediums, Ian and Derek. Nothing seemed to be happening for a while until Derek started to shake. It's OK, talk to us. <coughs> Come on, friend, talk to us. It's everyone, it's okay, everyone. Calm, it's okay, everyone. Just it's okay, they're using Dirk as a channel. It's okay, friend, come and talk. Try and communicate to us. Who are you? 
We're here to talk to your friend. Me. Leave you. Me. No, we won't leave you. Leave me. No. You don't scare me. No, you don't scare me. You sit down now. Sit down now. Sit down now. No, no, stay, stay, stay. It was at this point that Ian helped Derek and brought him round. This process took 15 minutes. It was only after that Derek told me he'd been possessed by the spirit of Daniel. This has been a first for certain members of the crew, as they had never seen Derek possessed before, and they certainly were not about to forget it. I, on the other hand, had turned a corner and had surprised myself by standing up to someone who was possessed by a so-called evil entity. I don't know what to believe at all. All I know is that secretly, I was scared to death. Alpa Manor was an interesting place that surprised us all. All the areas of the house that were known to have paranormal activity were monitored constantly, and nothing out of the ordinary occurred. However, paranormal activity did take place in the attic room. Books came off the shelves, noises were heard, and the family dog became agitated. So what did the crew think of our night at Alpa Manor? And would they ever forget it? I knew it was haunted, but unfortunately, there wasn't a camera in the room where things kicked off. But didn't they just? Um, I mean, some really good poltergeist activity taking place, books being thrown at people. Um, great amount of excitement. I feel Alpen Manor is haunted, quite haunted, um, by a number of spirit people. Best part being um, benevolent souls that, you know, found themselves leaving the physical body in their time and then coming back here in visitation. Um, but there was just one level within all that residual levels that, just, well, it didn't seem to fit. Derek came up with one or two rather interesting facts. Um, he came up with, uh, must admit, Margaret of Anjou um, and her son. But uh, I found it rather strange because if she was apparently talking to him, as it seemed as if she was, um, I don't understand why she managed to tell him her name wrong because, of course, he kept saying Anjou and, of course, it was Margaret of Anjou. How do I pronounce that? Margaret, it sounds like Margaret and Anjou. Mm -hmm. Anjou. Yeah. I was quite pleased, to be honest with you. We've got quite a lot of footage. Um, lots of things happen that we can't really explain uh, and I'm really looking forward to going over the tapes. I've enjoyed the place. It's been amazing. And it's been a great privilege as well to, to come and see such an incredible Cotswold Manor House with such good ghost stories. Possibly the most impressive part of this investigation uh, are the books that uh, seem to be flying off bookshelves and actually hitting members of the crew. Now, whilst the footage itself doesn't rule out the possibility that someone may have thrown the books, we are left with the testimony of the people who were there at the time, the crew. All the crew maintain that nobody actually threw the books, uh, and there's no reason why we shouldn't believe them. I bet you someone is... Another possible explanation would be the books uh, were just teetering on the edge of the shelf and just fell off on their own. When you look at the books on the bookshelves, they seem to be quite tightly packed. So again, that doesn't seem to be a likely explanation either. So what we're left with is perhaps some of the best footage that exists of this kind of phenomena. Whether it's paranormal, I'm not sure, but I definitely think it's worthy of further investigation. We were all terrified, confused and upset at what we had all witnessed during our investigation. Had we really experienced something supernatural at Alpa Manor? What do you think? Until the next time, sleep tight. What do you think about that? <laughs>